Let's take a little break now to look at the beautiful nature around us with the help of a professional photographer and adventurer, Roy Gelitz, uh, who captures wildlife like no one could before. Hello, Roy. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Yaakov. How has technology changed the way we can view animals? How did it help you? Well, in the last uh, recent years, you can see a lot of improvement, a lot of adma advancement in the field of uh, technology in the photography business. Uh, ever since the digital cameras caught on uh, acceleration, and you can see the better resolution, higher megapixels, better image quality, and of course everything got a lot, a lot cheaper. So it's very, very uh, easy to get yourself a very good camera. So uh, first of all, the, the quality is very high. It's much, much better than previous years you, you, during the film e era. And uh, also today you can even take images not only from the ground, but also from the air using a drone, a quadcopter. So the possibilities are practically endless these days. Even in past time, that you, you needed a lot of light to get a good image. Today, with the very high sensitivity of the digital cameras, you can shoot at very low light by using very high ISO and get spectacular images in times of the day that you just couldn't get it before. So tell me, how, how do you operate? So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going there every time with a, with a camera bag that weighs about 20 kilograms and also with another bag for the drone, for the quadcopter. Well, since I'm, I'm practically, I'm, I'm three photographers in one person. I'm a stills photographer for still images. I'm a video photographer, videographer for the videos that I make. And I'm also doing aerial photography with the drone. So since I'm doing three kinds of photography, I have to prioritize my, uh, my images. So first of all, I'm doing the stills images. After I'm getting the best stills images I could get, then I switch to video. Then I'm trying to get the best videos I can get. And when I get that, then I have the extra time to do it from the air using the drone. Well, can you give me some examples of, of the kind of animals you were able to capture this way? Well, um, I'm sh I shoot every, every time I'm in Africa. I'm at least three, four times a year I'm in Africa. Usually I'm going to Tanzania after the Great Migration. Lots of cheetahs, lions, le leopards, and of course the, the massive herds of wildebeest and zebras. In, ta in Uganda, I take photos of the mountain gorillas, the rare mountain gorillas, and uh, the chimpanzees in the north. In uh, the polar regions, of course, the majestic polar bear, which is the uh, land's largest carnivore. It's three and a half meters, four meters tall when it's standing on its rear legs. So everywhere I go, I try to get the best images I can using the gear that I have with me. And of course, the time that I have with the animals. Yeah, and this was Africa, but you also go to the North Pole. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And they are so different. Uh, how, how do you operate in the cold? Well, since it's so different, that's what I love about it. Because that gives me the diversity. Because every time I'm trying to get something different. So in the North Pole, I behave completely different. Usually, I'm there on a boat doing a cruise around the, the northern part of Spitsbergen in Svalbard, in the North Pole. And, and over there, I I try to get the, the, as close as I can to the polar bears and to the walruses. Um, every time, everywhere I go, I try to get practically the same. I mean, I try to get the, the behavior of the animals, the behavior of the wildlife, and that's how you get the best photos. Uh, the technique is a little bit different, shooting in snow versus shooting on the savanna of, of, of Africa. But at the end, it's photography and it's wildlife and every animal and its own behavior. Well, good luck and thank you very much. All right, thank you very much.